In this video, I'd like to teach you how to graph some very basic polar equations. Uh, but first, I'd like to remind you how you learned how to graph some very basic rectangular equations. So you have to think way back to middle school when you graph something simple like x equals 4. x equals 4, of course, is going to be a vertical line. The reason that it's a vertical line through 4 is x is fixed at 4, but y is allowed to vary. And y, y varies up and down. Meanwhile, if I was going to graph y equals negative 2, I would end up with a horizontal line through negative 2, because this time the y value is fixed and the x is allowed to vary. And as x varies, it moves left and right. Meanwhile, if we were going to graph something maybe where x and y were interrelated, and you were trying to explain this perhaps to a middle school student who hadn't learned about uh, much graphing just yet, maybe you would explain to them how to graph something simple like uh, y equals x, and uh, well, in the beginning, you might just resort to plotting some points in order to graph it. Uh, for example, if x is 0, y is 0, and x is 1, y is 1, and if x is 8, y is 8. And that's probably enough uh, to convince uh, a younger student how to graph something like y equals x. And then after they have all of that under their belts, then maybe you can move on to more complex things like graphing lines of the form mx plus b, or maybe graphing parabolas like ax squared plus bx plus c, and the sky's the limit once they understand the basics. We would like to do a similar thing, but with polar equations. If we're going to start with some simple polar equations, uh, how about we start with things where we don't have both r and theta at the same time. Maybe we'll start with something like r equals 2. So to graph the equation r equals 2, uh, you could say, okay, the radius needs to be 2. So you start here, and this might represent where the radius is 2 and the angle is 0. But the angle is free to move, and if the angle is free to move, I can start to spin around this radius of 2. Uh, the angle could be pi over 4, or it could be pi over 2, or it could move into the second quadrant. It could move into the third quadrant. Of course, it could go all the way around. And that's a pretty convincing argument that r equals 2 is going to form a circle with, of course, a radius of 2. <laughs> Meanwhile, if you were to graph something like uh, theta equals pi over 6, uh, you were wondering what this would look like. So now this is a situation where the angle is fixed and the radius is free to move. Uh, so this would be uh, pi over 6 right here. Um, I can choose any radius I'd like. I could pick a radius of 0. I can pick a radius of 1. It's pretty clear that anything along this ray uh, would fit the equation theta equals pi over 6, but maybe it's also clear that the entire line works in both directions because the radius is allowed to be negative. If we're only going to fix the angle at pi over 6, then the radius could be anything, positive or negative. And so that explains how to graph some very basic polar equations uh, where we have only r or only theta. But what about polar equations where r and theta are both involved? Maybe where r is a function of theta. Uh, let's start with something like r equals 4 divided by cosine of theta. 4 divided by cosine of theta, well, this doesn't seem like a real easy thing to graph. So maybe, like with the simple case of y equals x, you rely on plotting a few points to understand what's going on. Uh, so when we're plotting points, we tend to think of theta as our independent variable because it has to be plugged into a trig function. So I can think of some values of theta, just picking a few off the top of my head, maybe 0, pi over 3, maybe I pick pi over 2, uh, I might also pick 2 pi over 3. I could keep going, but I think I'll stop with a value of theta equals pi. And I'll plug these values in and start thinking what values of r come back out. Uh, when theta is 0, cosine of 0 is 1, and 4 divided by 1 is 4. When theta is pi over 3, cosine of pi over 3 is a half, and 4 divided by a half would be 8. Let's plot these two points and see where we are so far. So when theta is 0, I'm at a radius of 4, which would be right about here. Uh, meanwhile, when theta is pi over 3, I'm at a radius of 8, which would be right about here. Let's continue and see what happens next. At pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is undefined. 
which produces uh, an interesting result. Uh, we have some sort of asymptote going on here with our polar equation. We are somehow unable to plug in pi over 2 and get any kind of finite radius. So whatever this curve might be that connects the first point and the second point, it's never able to reach this angle of pi over 2. Let's plug in the last two points here and see if we can better understand what the graph of 4 divided by cosine theta is. So when I plug in 2 pi over 3, uh, cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. That means I'll get a negative 8 as the radius. And for pi, I'll get a negative 4. So when I plot my last two points, I have to be careful because I will have to think about how to plot a negative radius. And if you recall, a negative radius is plotted by thinking about that length on the negative x-axis before marking the angle rather than the positive x-axis. So that means 2 pi over 3 negative 8 will end up down here at this point right here. And pi comma negative 4 will end up right here, which is where everything began. So as I've finished plotting the points in my table, one thing that I couldn't help but notice was all the points that I was able to plot were along this vertical line that cut right through the x-axis. And it, well, if, if we think about this algebraically, isn't r equals 4 cosine theta the same as r cosine theta equals 4? Oh, it certainly is. And, and we know r cosine theta is another way to say x. So this is nothing more than the line that we graphed in the very beginning of this video. It's just x equals 4. And what we've successfully done is shown how you could take that polar equation, 4 over cosine theta, and manipulate it until it becomes a rectangular equation using just your knowledge that x is equal to 4, uh, x is equal to r cosine theta. Now, I hope you also recognize that plotting points was not necessarily enough to be able to make this simple graph. Uh, it helped us get a few points, but we didn't quite know necessarily how to connect those points. And you had to use a little bit of a combination of plotting some points and also a little bit of algebra. Let's see that play out with another example. And this time, let's choose an example where r is equal to 4 cosine theta rather than 4 divided by cosine. So r equals 4 cosine theta, if we try that exact same technique that we used last time, where we try to plot a few points, and I'm going to pick the same exact points, uh, 0, pi over 3, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, and pi. Uh, this time we'll multiply those cosine values uh, by 4 to produce 4, 2, 0, negative 2, and Four. And this time when I try to plot these points, what I end up seeing is something a little different. I start with a radius of 4 at an angle of 0, and then I move to a radius of 2 at an angle of pi over 3, and then I move to the pole, and then I move to this negative radius, and then I come back full circle exactly where I started. And it's really just a game of connect the dots to get from one to the next. We get from the first point to the second point. I'm just going to play this game of connect the dots. And that's simply because what I'm doing is I'm imagining theta is increasing from 0 to pi. If theta is increasing from 0 to pi, then that means I'm not moving horizontally, like if x were increasing. I'm not moving vertically, as if y was increasing. But I'm moving in this counterclockwise fashion since the angle is increasing. And you'll notice that after connecting those points, this equation of r equals 4 cosine theta, well, it looks a lot like a circle, and a little bit of algebra can prove that. Uh, the algebra that I can do is multiplying both sides of the equation by r so that I get r squared equals 4r cosine theta. I know that r squared is x squared plus y squared, and I know that r cosine theta is x. So I get this equation x squared plus y squared equals 4x. If you recall, in algebra 2, you often took equations like this and completed the square. So that would mean rewriting the equation this way, x squared minus 4x plus y squared equals 0, and then perhaps adding 4 to both sides 
to get that perfect squared trinomial in x, x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus y squared with equal 4 since I added it to both sides. And then factoring the x's gives you x minus 2 squared plus y squared equals 2 squared. And this is convincing uh, us that this is not only a circle, but it has a center at 2 comma 0, as you can see in the picture. And it has a radius of 2, as you can also pretty clearly see in the picture that the circle there has a radius of 2. OK, I hope this video gave you a nice introduction to how to graph some basic polar equations like r equals 2 or theta equals pi over 6, and also some insight on how you can start to graph some more complicated polar equations because they're coming your way soon.